line joining us now, the lead researcher on the team, Dr. Stefan Kappa. Good morning, and thank you so much for joining us. This is such an, an intriguing topic. It really is. Let's start, though, with the trial. I mean, this has been something you've been working on for like a decade now. Explain to us what it is and where you are in this project. Yeah, so it takes a decade because malaria vaccine development is extremely difficult. People have tried for 100 years to develop a malaria vaccine with limited success. We have an advanced vaccine candidate that is produced by a pharmaceutical company, which gives about 30 percent protection, which is not sufficient for malaria. So we need to come up with no, new and in, innovative ideas to develop a vaccine. And a vaccine is really the most effective way to control, eliminate and eradicate malaria, which is obviously a disease of global importance affecting a lot of people uh, worldwide. So um, it takes a long time because it requires research. It requires research in the laboratory, tinkering around in the laboratory and finding new things, finding new ways of designing the vaccine. And you do, do first studies um, outside humans. And then when you are convinced that it works in humans, you move to human studies. And we did this trial in human volunteers here in the Seattle area who were recruited from the Seattle area from all walks of life who participated participated in this trial, including myself. You participated in the trial yes, as well? Yes, I was part of the trial and uh, I enjoyed it very much. You did? <laughs> so, I mean, I've never been, um, uh, except for like when I was in college and you could do experiments for psychology where they tried to make you feel bad about yourself and you took a <laughs> test about it later. I've never been a part of a medical trial and people vol volunteer for this. How, how do you find the right people and, and then what, what are you doing and how, how long are you following them? Yeah, so we're advertising for these trials and we are recruiting um, volunteers in collaboration with our um, major partner for this, the Fred Hutchinson Cancer Research Center in partnership with our Center for Infectious Disease Research. And um, then we get um, interesting, in interested uh, people calling in and saying, hey, this sounds fascinating and you will be surprised what the motifs are, what the, reason, what the reasons are, why they do this. Uh, some say, oh, my father had malaria when he was fighting in the war. Or um, some uh, people say, I've been traveling to Africa and my child got malaria, although it was taking pills. Uh, or it is people who know about global health problems and want to contribute. So the, what you did here uh, is, is basically re-engineer or genetically engineer the parasite itself. But when you say genetic engineering, people get kind of freaked out. So would you explain in pretty simple terms what it is that you did here that might protect all of us around the world, really. Yeah, so we take the whole organism, the whole parasite that causes malaria, and we snip out genes out of what we call the genome, which is all the genes that uh, make you what you are and makes a, paras makes a parasite what the parasite is. And uh, 5,000 genes in the parasite, very complex organism, nearly as complex as cells in your own body. And um, we had uh, to spend a very long time finding the right genes because we, we couldn't delete too many genes because then that would kill the parasite. And it killed parasite does not work as a vaccine. It has to be alive, but it has to be defanged. It has to be rendered harmless. It has to be safe. So three genes are deleted from the parasite. And that's basically a subtraction. We don't add anything in. So when it comes to uh, the genetic engineering and the concerns about genetically altered organisms, um, I think we are fine because we're just removing things from the organism. We're not adding anything on. What is it about Seattle that makes it such an innovative place? We see you know, so many advances in technology, in medicine. Um, I know that you had an early supporter in the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation for some of the earlier trials. You mentioned work with Fred Hutch. Um, why is that so important? And what is it about this region that enables things like this to, to come forward? Yeah, I uh, love working in Seattle. I'm originally from Germany and worked in New York before. And then I came to Seattle. And I just find this a very unique place. People are very outward oriented. They're not looking inward, just concerned with their own, with their own uh, affairs but they're really interested in the world. We are at the Pacific Rim, so people are very much oriented towards countries that, that suffer from malaria, in, in Asia, for example, so they know about this. Um, and just the global health community here is very active and very integrated and very um, collaborative, I would say. So our work with the Fred Hutchinson Cancer Research Center, the University of Washington, of course, our Center for Infectious Disease Research, really work closely together to solve these global health problems. And you mentioned the Bill and Melinda, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, which obviously contributes greatly to fund um, global health work to f come up with new interventions that um, can prevent diseases and um, can help um, alleviate this tremendous burden globally that some of these uh, diseases cause. And yes, the uh, foundation has initially funded us, but then um, they uh, stopped funding us and funding was picked up by the Department of Defense uh, because um, they want a vaccine for U.S. soldiers. Imagine U.S. soldiers get deployed around the world and they're all, always exposed to malaria. So the, um, the um, U.S. government, the Department of Defense, wants a malaria vaccine, and so does the National Institutes of Health, which will support the next trial. Really quickly, because we only have a couple of seconds, is this the beginning of the end of malaria? 
I would certainly hope so. Um, and um, I think it looks very promising. Of course, we need to do more clinical testing and demonstrate that it is highly um, effective in preventing malaria. But from all we know, all the studies that we have done and others have done, um, our prediction is that it will be a highly effective vaccine. And that I know for sure, a highly effective vaccine for malaria will be the solution to malaria. Wow. Groundbreaking doesn't even begin to yeah. describe it. Dr. Stefan Kappa, thank you so much. We really appreciate your time. Thank you.